and saying on my Facebook page, I was at loss for words. I found some words, which I want to share about Newtown. And then perhaps after this, we can begin to move forward with our life, keeping our thoughts and prayers aimed toward Newtown, Connecticut, and the families and victims there. So in a moment, I have a comment about that. First, welcome in the rest of the gang. The whole crew is here today. Tom, JJ, Hunter, guys, hope you had a better weekend. It's hard to have too good of a weekend without somehow or another thinking about Newtown, Connecticut. It's 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 been everywhere all weekend. It's been on everyone's mind all weekend. They had the first two funerals for victims today. But my question, buddy, is when does it become? Because now I think the the, the the news media that I've seen because they have to have a new story every so often to keep it fresh and all. When does it ch- turn from being news? And become sensationalism. No, we're going to talk media. about. I don't know if it's sensational. I, I'll put it like this: This is. I got something prepared. I want to talk about here on this, and don't get too far ahead because I want to talk about it. Okay. And as we go, we move through the next two phases of this thing of grieving, and then trying to move forward, and whatever that time is. Today, that we'll begin to focus on a few other things because that's what we do. Uh, I saw the Lincoln movie over the weekend. I have a few things, three things about that today I want to talk about. And then last week I saw the Nutcracker here by Marion Ballet, and I want to talk a little bit about that because there was uh, children involved in that as well. And, and by the way, if you didn't see the Saturday Night Live opening, it was quite quite unusual and quite uh, uh, hard-hitting in the end because it really made you think about Newtown without actually saying it. They opened up. They changed their open with Martin Short. They had... A children's choir singing Silent Night. It yeah. opened up cold with nothing else. And then uh, it, you got the message, and it was one of those times when I think they did just the right thing. Uh, meanwhile, other things to talk about later today. Uh, Gators had a tough loss in Arizona. They could have kicked it away. We'll talk to a couple of people about that in the 5 o'clock Buddy Sports page hour. Hubert Mizell and Franz Breer will talk to us about that subject. Uh, but things are going well for, um, uh, for CF. Matter of fact, uh, the Patriots on a roll, seven straight. Richard Burton joins us in the Sports Hour as well. You know what, guys? If I could have one Christmas present, this would be it. Story about uh, today about gas wars possibly threatening to knock prices down below three dollars in Ocala. Wouldn't that be something if that happened? It's close. Three oh nine. I paid three oh nine today. Yeah, I see it could be going down below three three dollars. So uh, I'm okay with that. That's a that's a good thing. It's been a long time since we had any good news in that. All right, about today's comments. I posted on Facebook today that I felt a kind of a loss at words for the show today. My brother Bill Martin, who does a morning show on the Joy FM, uh, has a big following around here, immediately responded, really without realizing the context of my post, when I said, I'm at loss for words. And he responded, ha, a Martin at loss for words? And it was his little, you know, just little brother to brother kind of. Um, uh, not a jab, just a comment, and I totally got it. I knew what he meant, and I wasn't the least bit offended by it, but several of my Facebook friends jumped all <laughs> over him about it, saying, think before you talk, da, da, da. just example of, you know, our nerves are so frazzled right now about everything. Uh, and, our, and our grieving continues on for the victims in, in Newtown, Connecticut, but some of us just don't know what to say or do. We really don't know what to say or do. So, this morning, what I really should have said is I'm at loss for the right words to say. Finally, I think I found a few, which I'll share with you the next uh, break, although some of you should probably be prepared to be mad at me when I say them. I'm just going to put that out there right now. So, stay tuned for that comment as well as coming up at 3.30, the Chief, Greg Graham, joins us to talk about could this been have been Ocala? Could it have been Ocala instead of Newtown, Connecticut? What about guns? He lives with them every day, both ends of them. People want to shoot at him and people he has to shoot at. Uh, what do we do? Have we gotten out of control completely? Is there, uh, is there legislation needed? You know, and it's an emotional issue. People say, don't bring politics into it. It's kind of hard not to talk about gun violence after what happened. I don't have the answers. I do have a few thoughts. Stay tuned. Coming up next right here on the Voice of Ocala, and we'll share those thoughts with you on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. And if you've missed the show the last couple days, 
Go to face. Go to Facebook. Listen to me. Go to YouTube. Put in WOCA in YouTube. Click on the WOCA logo, and there's the Voice of Ocala and Buddy Saturday Sports page for your listening pleasure. Brought to you by the Source. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And State Farm agent Angie Lewis is always there, too, working hard to serve her community as a citizen and insurance agent. At the Angie Lewis State Farm Agency, they go far beyond any slogan. Angie wants to help you adjust your insurance needs as your life evolves, from everything to helping educate your teen driver to protecting your family against everyday risk. They want to change the way you perceive insurance by developing relationships with clients, which is why Angie and her staff are proud to be a part of so many good causes in Ocala. Each week on The Voice of Ocala, they feature a good neighbor of the week, saluting those who give exceptional service or do random acts of kindness to others. They're also big sports fans and sponsor our weekly State Farm State of the State report, which highlights a different college sports program each week. The Angie Lewis Agency of Ocala is located at 1122 Northeast 36th Avenue, where visitors are always welcome and the coffee pot is always on. Call your good neighbor State Farm agent today, Angie Lewis, at 291-2444. Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting-edge technology taking place right here in Ocala, the power plant. IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar, impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Hi, this is Tom Schmidt, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports. From NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and J.J. LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. On the next AM Ocala Live, Robin and I will be speaking to Dr. Todd Mayer. He's coming on to speak to parents of children who have life-threatening allergies such as anaphylaxis. Kim Schneider is the Senior Director for Habitat for Humanity International's Disaster Response Unit. He'll be speaking about their 24 Habitat Mobile Response Unit voyage up to New York and New Jersey to aid the victims of Hurricane Sandy. And then on Open for Debate, we'll pick a topic from the news and we will debate it. Have all of your gardening questions answered by Master Gardener Carol Ann Baldwin. Bob Latham will be with us. He's a sports writer, a trial lawyer, and a columnist for Sports Travel Magazine. He's coming out to speak about his book, Winners and Losers. Damage Control with Joe Reichel and Rob Sobieski. And then Rosemary Atangurak is coming on. She's been with us before. She's an Inupiat activist up in Alaska. She's coming on to speak to us about the historic announcement that the Obama administration is poised to announce regarding the protection of America's Arctic region. All of that plus fun with Joe right here on The Source, WOCA 96.3 FM. 1370 AM. If you want to avoid getting ripped off and put more money in your pocket, then join me, Clark Howard, every weeknight at 6, right here on WOCA, The Source. The number one item on Santa's list for kids of all ages is a bicycle. Top Gear Bicycles at 923 North Magnolia, Suite 1500, you know, just down from Cafe Havana, has felt Raleigh, Rocky Mountain, and more. Plus, WOCA's listeners will receive at least a 10% discount on all in-stock bikes and accessories just by letting them know we told you about them. Top Gear is a full-service family shop and has the lowest labor rates in town with only top-rated mechanics. This year, it's Top Gear. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Happy holidays from all of us at WRC. 1370 WOCA. This is JJ the Sub in the WOCA studios with this news update brought to you by the Country Club Ocala. Area residents better enjoy the extremely low gas prices while they can, considering the state average on Sunday was $3.27 per gallon, $3.17 a gallon in Orlando and Tampa. 
AAA officials said they don't expect the state average to drop below $3 a gallon by the end of the year. Prices are expected to begin climbing at the end, beginning of the new year in conjunction with stock market optimism for a rebounding economy. This news update was brought to you by the Country Club of Ocala. If you would like to schedule a special event at one of Ocala's premier facilities, call 352-237-6644 today. Congratulations to JJ, by the way. Graduation day <laughs> for at uh, Central Florida. That's great stuff. By the way, mm-hmm. gas prices are dropping around here. So uh, three oh nine. I paid. I paid three oh nine today for gas. Yeah. Wow. So uh, so we'll, let's hope it continues to go down. All right. Uh, I want to get back to the subject at hand. And you know, if you have a microphone today, or if you're a columnist, or you're in the media, you you have kind of an obligation to continue on the discussion. That uh, we all have been thinking about. You can hardly get out of bed without thinking about it, even if you don't turn on the TV. Uh, and it's it's not a topic a lot of people want to hear about. Some people turn away; they turn off their TVs, and I get that, and that's fine. And if you want to turn off your radio for the next hour, uh, that's fine. Bottom line is is that we have to have a discussion about this, and we have to have qualified people like Greg Graham, the chief of police, to join us later on, which he's doing at three thirty. Meanwhile. Yeah, some of us do turn that deaf ear to the media, but some of us dig deeper, looking for information, facts, answers. You know, this is a three-hour show, two hours of non-sports, and I thought about maybe not talking about it today, but it, it was just impossible. We, I feel the need to at least address this unspeakable evil event which struck us on Friday. And truthfully, I'd like to move forward on other topics. I'd like to just sort of say, let's get on with life. But the horror of this thing, the residual horror, is so oppressive. And the grief is so pervasive. We can't. We're stuck in it right now. And it doesn't seem to be getting a whole lot better today. So my dealing way of dealing with this kind of stuff is this. I'd like to dig in the information find out more about the event so I can better fathom the tragedy that see if I can make sense out of it. When 9-11 happened, I was the managing editor of the four daily newspapers in Southwest Florida, going to work each day. I scoured the wire reports, uh, the dispatches from the local reporters from local angles. It was therapeutic for me because I felt like in some small way I was helping our readers know more about the event, learning more about myself. But we are never the same after something like that, just as we will never be the same after Sandy Hook. Already just the news is stifling and almost overwhelming, and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of relief. So today, after a weekend of reading everything I could read, and I got my hands on and watching hours of news TV and talking about it, I carry on because it's everywhere, in front of us on the Internet, the newspapers, etc., and, of course, we must speak about it on this day. You pick up even the Huffington Post, you read, Today's Huffington Post front page. Another day, more deaths. Two police officers shot and killed in Kansas. Three-year-old accidentally shoots himself and dies. Gunman at large after shooting victim four times. Man shoots, wife keeps cops in standoff for hours. One person shot in San Antonio. Gunman later shot by cops. Woman shot at campground. One woman shot to death. Son thought she was sleeping. The common denominator is pretty easy to find out here. We're not going to go all political on you today or preach at you or preach with you, but I am going to ask you to look at the facts and at least consider what the president said so eloquently about not letting things like Newtown happen again without trying to do something about it. So I ask you these questions today. Whether you're pro-gun, pro-RDA, anti-NRA, I don't care. Number one, if Adam Lines' mother hadn't owned an automatic weapon, would those 26 people be dead today? Of what use is an AR-15 other than a killing machine? And are more guns or less control or more control the answer? The end question for all of us who believe the Second Amendment is indeed an important important part of our American way. How do we keep assault weapons out of the hands of the criminally insane and evil? And how do we quell our fear? We don't feel safe going to the movie, the library, the mall, sending our kids to school. Is there no place safe in America anymore? Are Americans at war with each other? 
And finally, what, if anything, should be done? How do we break this cycle of violence? I've been through these gun control debates a zillion times. Ever since President Kennedy was assassinated, then Bobby Kennedy, then Martin Luther King, and President Reagan was shot, and on and on and on and on. The end result is that we have continued slaughtering each other, no matter what we do. And I keep hearing that we should own more guns, not fewer. Just this past year, the FBI says 16.8 million background checks were made on people wanting to buy guns, more than twice as many as the year before. So what do we do, sit by and watch? I have to say, whether Democrat or Republican or otherwise, you have to agree with the president when he said in Newtown last night, surely we can do better than this. Surely we have an obligation to try. What does this mean? I don't really know. What have we learned? How do we cope? One woman made a simple Christmas ornament on her tree with all 26 names on it. In San Francisco and Oakland, there was a gun buyback planned before Newtown where bigger crowds than expected showed up. 600 guns were turned in for $200 cash apiece. Some people just said they want to get the guns out of their house. In a moment, we'll be speaking with a man who faces gun violence every single day and yet needs a gun to protect himself and all of us. Chief Greg Graham knows all too well about this, just as he knows about Newtown Connecticut's tragedy and that it could just as well have been Ocala, Florida. Those are my thoughts today, gentlemen, about it as we move forward. And um, I'm sure that uh, there are people who disagree with some of those, but I agree with the president. Something must be done. Hmm. You know, I... Um I haven't been in the woods hunting a long time, buddy. I had a friend shot and killed when I was 15 that I uh, watched happen. So as a decision, I've made not I don't go back in the woods anymore. Uh, he was killed by a uh, hunter who was down on a WMA over near, near the Jacksonville area. Uh, and the hunter was from, ironically enough, Connecticut and saw bushes shaking and didn't care to look to see if there was an orange vest in there. He just shot into the bushes. So, was that the gun's fault or was that the ignorance of the hunter's fault? Regardless, my friend's dead. Doesn't matter who's to blame, what's to blame. So, as a choice, I don't hunt anymore, don't own a gun. The Second Amendment says it's my right to do so, though. I really don't think the forefathers envisioned a gun that could shoot a hundred rounds inside of a minute when they made that part of the Second Amendment. I have a tendency, and I, I upset my friends who are NARA guys, NRA guys, one of my friends in particular in Atlanta who, on his Facebook earlier this weekend, laid out his seven AR-15s, his two AK-47s, and his 13 handguns and said, these are mine. I use them responsibly. And I sent him a message, what the hell do you need to kill a hundred times in less than a minute? And he said, it's not the fact that I can kill something in less than a minute with 100 shots. It's that it's my right to own them. Let me, while, st let me stop you right there for a second. What is a right? <laughs> That's what I ask you. Yeah, what right do you have? Do you have a right to own them? As my son-in-law says, a nuclear plant in your backyard? I, I don't see any reason. What is a right to vote? Can everybody vote? No. No. You have to earn that right to vote. You have to be a certain Certainly. age. You can't be a felon. Uh, there, there are rights and there are rights. And I granted, everybody's entitled to own a gun. Everybody's not entitled to own a killing machine gun, an assault rifle, AK-47, you know, well, AR-15. You know what I'll tell you. That, here's, what, here's, what the, here's what the people that will tell you that where you're wrong is they'll say, it's so that I can keep a well-formed militia, so that if yeah, right. I can, if I can put any government down that yeah, tries boy. to yeah. in, intrude on that's my that's our biggest threat. We're going to have Washington people well, watching us and shooting say. us. Yeah, they'll say, and our government has those kind of weapons. So if mm. our government ever, if we never need to rise up against our government, we need the same weapons they have. Yeah. Well, to you know, fight maybe them. they should go live in another country. I'm just telling you, that's the argument. Yeah, I know the, the militia mentality, and I support the idea that we should be able to order own guns. Let me just say this, and I'm not going to solve this today, and I have no sense in getting into a gun de control debate because right. it, it always ends in rhetoric. It always ends in people, uh, you know, invoking the Second Amendment, and it, and it always involves, you know, the issue of my right to own a gun, uh, whatever, and nobody ever get, agrees. I'm just saying, isn't there something wrong with what we're doing? 
we have 15 times as many cases of gun violence, that includes suicides, as any country in the world. Right. But, 16 million people and, apply for guns this past year. And they what say, is wrong with this picture? They will say, uh, people will say, but law-abiding citizens didn't do this. A crazy maniac did this who yeah, right. broke the law. So let's just go ahead. You take and, it, but they'll I, tell I, you you take it. From, you I've take it from you take it from law-abiding citizens. I've, I've the criminals it. and the crazies will still get. I, I know a lot of law-abiding citizens who don't think that way. But nonetheless, I think the thing is, is that if we even say that the the argument that we need to arm the schools, we just kill all the kids' guns too and say they'll all have guns and they'll kill these people. Well, and, and the educators are they expected to be able to be marksmen and teachers? Well, they are you know? in Switzerland. Uh, well. And let me tell you something. The one country nobody ever wants to go to war with, and they never hear about any uh, about any attacking Switzerland at the age of eighteen, you are issued a rifle by the government yeah. that is yours for life. Yeah, yeah look, uh, Sus- all I'm saying is Switzerland has Switzerland almost doesn't no crime. go to Switzerland doesn't go to war because they don't want to fight. That's why they don't go okay. to war. Okay, so they're neutral. That's why. So okay. anyway, well, because they have so many guns, right, nobody wants to mess with. Them. I know, but this here again, the old cliche: if you want to come, go down a dead end on a talk show. Talk about abortion and gun control. You're right. And that will be all the people who got up by ideas and whatever, you know, and nobody have ever seems to get it fixed. There's gotta be a way to keep I children safe. I just know safe. it's not working. You're right, you're you're right. It's not working about the same way the drug war is not working. Something has no. to change. All right, well let's talk to a man to who knows what he's talking about. We're gonna take a break, come back, and Chief uh, Greg Graham, Ocal Police Department will join us. We'll get his thoughts about the situation and uh, we will uh, we'll talk with uh, Mr. with Chief Graham after this timeout. On Voice of Ocala, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. Hey, if you've missed one of the past shows, go to YouTube, put in WOCA, click on the WOCA logo, and there the YouTube shows are of the Voice of Ocala and Buddy Saturday Sports page for your listening pleasure. Brought to you by The Source. Hello, I'm Dawn Lovell, lead event designer and owner at Party Time Rentals. Have you ever wondered what it takes to make an event spectacular? Well, look no further. It's what we do every day. Whether you're hosting an intimate dinner for 10 or a gala for thousands, at Party Time Rentals, we find just the right style and elegance to make your event a success. Our extensive inventory of the finest in chandeliers, tents, crystal, china, and specialty items is featured in our fabulous showroom. Stop by and say hello. It's a great way to get ideas for an event and experience for yourself how you can make your party time special. Party Time Rentals, located on Southwest 10th Street, just off Route 200 in Ocala, and off Southwest 34th Street in Gainesville. For more information, call 352-629-8858. That's 352-629-8858. The party begins at party time. Hi, I'm Pat Murray, General Manager of the Country Club of Ocala, inviting you to pay me a visit at the finest country club in North Central Florida. Come see why our members and friends embrace the Country Club of Ocala as a beautiful, serene place for those with active lifestyles. We have it all, from our Blue Ribbon Golf Course to our superb facilities. When you want to enjoy golf, tennis, swimming, fitness, or dine on cuisine that is second to none in North Central Florida, the Country Club of Ocala is where you'll want to be. So call me, Pat Murray, at 237-6644. If you need a sign or a banner for your yard or your business or your campaign, I'd recommend you go to Signs Unlimited at 318 South Magnolia in Ocala. Screen printing, embroidery, digital graphics, do what I did when we needed signs for the Save the Marion Theater Group. Go see Vic Buttermore at Signs Unlimited if you want quality work with a fast turnaround from somebody who is deeply committed to his community and always ready to assist you. There's a reason Vic's slogan is, it's our business to make your business better. Sign up for Signs Unlimited. Call 732-7341 today. Are you wasting hundreds or thousands of dollars on termite retreat fees? If you're not with Turner Pest Control, you probably are. Turner Pest Control offers the 